Today, I'm answering questions that people frequently ask me when they find out that I threw hiked the Appalachian Trail from Georgia to Maine. Hi everyone, I'm Audrey, known as Glow Stick on Trail in case you don't know me. In 2018, I quit my job in Washington, D.C., put all my stuff in storage, gave up my apartment, and hiked the AT from Georgia to Maine. It was incredible. I can't say enough nice things about it. But anyway, so I have questions that come up over and over and over again that people ask, so I thought that I would go ahead and just answer them for all of you guys. How long did it take you to hike the trail? It took me 181 days, just under six months, but typically it takes people between five and seven months. I started March 20th and I finished September 16th. Uh, most people start between mid-March and mid-April and most people finish between, I'd say early September and mid-October. You do kind of have to beat the snow when you get to Maine if you're going northbound because Mount Katahdin, which is where you end the trail, does close. There's no specific date because it's weather dependent, but it's usually around October 15th. So you don't wanna get all the way up to the end of the AT and find out that you can't finish because Mount Katahdin is closed. How much did it cost? According to the Trek, which is a website dedicated to all things long distance backpacking, it typically costs between $3,500 and $6,500 to complete a through hike of the AT. That is just on trail expenses. That does not include your gear. It does not include your bills back home, the things that you might need to pay for once you are off the AT. So for myself, I had some bills back home that I had to pay. So everything included on trail, plus my bills back home, I spent probably between $7,000 and $7,500. I was on the higher end. My trail family, well, we did share hotel rooms, so I wasn't paying for my own rooms or anything. We were pretty loose with our spending when we would get to towns. We'd go to restaurants, we'd go to breweries. We were basically having the full experience. There are definitely ways to do it cheaper. If you wanna save money, stay out of towns. Towns are a money suck. How did I train? I didn't really train, but I should have. I had a strange mystery illness the winter before I started the trail, and it took me out for weeks. I was exhausted for weeks. I got tested for several things, nothing came back, but I had to miss a whole week of work, and I was literally exhausted for so long from this. My mom's a nurse, and she was convinced I had the mumps. Maybe I did, who knows? Anyway, so that kind of took some time away and energy away from some time that I was gonna train. But if I were to recommend how you train, I would say hike with a backpack, a heavy backpack, as much as you can before you get on trail. Because I found personally, I live in Colorado now, I do a ton of hiking very regularly, and even when I'm in great hiking shape, once I put on a backpack, it's a complete freaking game changer. It's so much harder. My legs get so much more sore. So I think no matter how great of hiking shape you're in, you need to be hiking with a backpack. That is how you should be training. That's my advice anyway. And that's what I would do next time. Did you carry a gun on the trail? No, I did not. <laughs> that's all I'll say about that. Did you feel safe on the trail? Yes, I felt extremely safe on the trail. So what you don't really realize until you actually get out there and do it is that Hiking the AT is, there's a lot of other people who are doing it, and most of those people are starting at the same place, going in the same direction at the same time within the same month long period. So there could be 50 people starting the AT on the same day that you do. And if you never wanna camp alone on the entire AT, you don't have to. There are shelters every few miles. You can stay in the shelters. You can camp at those shelters. There are other campsites that don't have shelters, but people still congregate at. It's a very friendly trail. People look out for each other. The communities around the trail are used to hikers, and there are so many people out there who are willing to help hikers. So I felt extremely safe. I felt like if anything ever were to happen, there were plenty of other people around who were going to be around to help me. And you also realize very quickly that word spreads very quickly on trail. People talk to each other. People look out for each other. If some, someone's being shady, you learn about it before you run into that person. If something 
is off, if something strange is going on, generally you will hear about that from other hikers. People talk and people take care of each other. So personally, I felt very safe. I also hiked with a trail family for the majority of the trail. So I had people to hike with, I had people to camp with, I had people to stay in towns with, and that also added to me feeling very safe on the trail. Did you get any injuries? So I was lucky, I did not get any serious injuries. I did deal with some overuse injuries at the beginning of the trail. My knees were really bothering me, especially at the beginning. I wore two braces for a while at the beginning, two knee braces, and I ended up wearing one of those braces on my, I, my left knee for pretty much the entire trail. I used to be really big into running and I've had issues with my knees in that regard for years, but I found that as I strengthened my legs, my knees behaved much better. I also dealt with a little bit of tendonitis in my ankles in Tennessee when it was muddy and there were loose rocks for several days in a row. So the tendonitis, it's very common, I found out in basketball players and dancers, like people who are on their ankles and moving around in their ankles. But luckily it was not serious. I was able to just take a couple days of rest, take some ibuprofen, and luckily for me, the pain went away. Even though it felt more serious than it was when it first started happening because it was pretty painful and I was like panicking a little bit like, oh no, what if this takes me off the trail for a while? What if I lose my trail family? But luckily that didn't happen and my ankles calmed down, especially after I rested and especially after it stopped being so muddy. <laughs> what did you eat? I ate a lot of junk food, <laughs> which I would not recommend. I really next time need to get my nutrition way better in line because I came off the trail with anemia and high cholesterol. And that's like while doing so much activity and I just wasn't taking care of my body in the way that I should have been for what I was asking for it to do. So for breakfast, I would usually eat granola with powdered milk and coffee. For dinner, I would eat nor pasta sides or rice and bean sides or indomie, which is fancy ramen, or ramen. Um, lunch varied a lot, sometimes wraps with cheese, sometimes bagel thins with laughing cow cheese, protein bars, dried fruits. I really wasn't into nuts at all until I got to the state of Maine and then my body was craving peanut butter so hard. I ate a lot of candy, I ate a lot of fruit snacks crackers and cheese and, and also at the beginning of the trail i was carrying more produce so i was i was getting a bag of spinach every time i went into town and i would occasionally hike out with a piece of fruit or an avocado or something like that to try to get produce into my diet and i would also try to eat salads along with my grilled cheese and french fries and pizza when i went to towns but it just wasn't enough. I, I had emergencies, which I was like, oh, I'll drink these instead of taking vitamins, but I found that I just didn't want to drink them, so I didn't end up taking a vitamin at all. And that was a huge mistake on my part. But I know that you can get dehydrate, dehydrated vegetables and freeze-dried beans and things like that, and I personally need to get more vitamins, minerals, and protein in my diet the next time around. So. My advice to you would be pay attention to your nutrition. It's so important. I ended up being exhausted in the state of New Hampshire from there to the end of the trail. And I, I really think a large part of that was the anemia due to my poor nutrition, but I didn't know that I had that until I got off the trail. So I would take better care of myself next time and I would recommend you do the same. Did you hike alone? No, I did not. Well, I did a few times, um, but consistently I did not hike alone. I started the trail with a friend of mine from study abroad in college, Natalie, who became Ibex. Our first evening, we met a new friend, Girl Scout, who ended up hiking with us for a whole month. And in our first week on trail, we formed a trail family, trail family with several other people. And we ended up sticking with that trail family, which changed a little bit here and there, but sticking with that trail family until the very end, Mount Katahdin. Um, that being said, I did have a few instances on trail where I was hiking alone or hiking with other people because, for example, I got off the trail to go to a music festival, so then I was alone catching up to my trail family afterwards. Or around the 4th of July, my different trail family members got off the trail for different things, so I ended up hiking alone then as well, although I formed a new tra <laughs> trail family in the state of New Jersey just for one state. But even if you are hiking alone, 
it's so easy to make friends. You just, you know, you camp at shelters, you go have your dinners there, you just go, go up to other people at the shelters and hang out and talk to them and chat and you chat with people while you're hiking. And it's, it's honestly, it's so easy to meet people out there. People are so friendly and open. So even if you start the trail solo, if you want to hike with other people, camp with other people, make friends, it's easy to do that. Did you ever want to quit? No, not at all. Not one time. I, even in my worst moments on trail, I loved it. I loved it so much. I was like, this is my community. This is my life for right now. And I honestly cherished every single second that I was there and was so grateful to be there. I never wanted to quit. What were the worst parts of the trail? <sighs> I hiked in a really rainy year. So I remember I was in the state of Virginia for basically the whole month of May. And I think that in that month, it rained like 25 days. My clothes started smelling like mildew. I got blisters for the first and only time after I got caught in a huge rainstorm and the water rushed down my legs into my hiking boots and they didn't dry. <laughs> um, it, it was really, that was tough on the spirit. And then the other worst parts I would say were, I didn't love the state of New York. It's just unnecessarily hard in my opinion. And it was so hot while I was there. And I'm a native New Yorker, so I feel really bad saying that, but it's true. <laughs> And then my, my trail family had some drama up north in Vermont and we sort of split up. I, I stayed with a portion of the trail family and we picked up more friends. So it ended up working out really well and I had an amazing time with those people and I wouldn't want to change, I wouldn't want to take away the time I had with those people for anything. So I think that it all worked out, but in the moment it was really hard, so. What was your favorite state? Maine. Ah. Maine was everything I wanted the trail to be for the whole entire time. And that's not to say I didn't love the trail the whole time because I freaking did. But Maine was just otherworldly. So freaking beautiful. The people were so nice. The campsites were incredible. The weather, ah, it was sunny pretty much the entire time. It was rainy our first day that we stepped in and it was sunny all except for one other day the entire time we were on the trail. What? in Maine, which was just wild after dealing with so much rain and crappy weather the whole rest of the trail. We, were, we felt like we were rewarded for making it that far. It was like the promised land. It was incredible and I never wanted to leave. <laughs> Would you do another through hike? In a heartbeat, yes. <laughs> I loved my AT experience so, so much. And I really, really want to do the Pacific Crest Trail. So that'll be next on my list. and. I definitely want to do the Colorado Trail as well. After the AT, I moved to Colorado and I freaking love my new state and that trail looks amazing. It's just that it's only, it's like 480 miles or something. So, you know, I couldn't really justify quitting a job to go 480 miles, but I do feel like someday there will be an opportunity and I will also hike the Colorado Trail. Continental Divide Trail, I don't know, we'll see. I've driven through Wyoming for hours on end by myself, and I can't imagine hiking through there is that much fun. Except the one river range looks amazing, but maybe I'm wrong, and maybe Wyoming will be amazing, and it will surprise me. It's just that there's a lot of plains and desert out there that I drove through, and it really intimidated me. So, I don't know. If you like hiking in Wyoming, let me know. Let me know what I'm missing. And if you guys have any other questions that I can answer about the experience, let me know in the comments. I obviously love talking about my AT experience, so I would love to hear from all of you. Anyway, I hope that you liked this video. Do me a favor, like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you, I'll see you all later.